Trust me, that is all I need. Yo, I'm still at your heart tonight. Set my hand and stand by my side. Hello, dear friends. I have a new video for you today. And uh, in this video, we will be discussing uh, a very simple but a very interesting structure. Uh, this structure is uh, formed of two parts. One is the socic. Uh, this is an auxiliary verb and a verb with the knee ending. So basically, this is uh, auxiliary plus main verb structure, which expresses uh, that an activity is performed on a regular basis. It is a habit. So, but first of all, uh, a few words about this this word, sokik. Uh, don't worry about this ik ending. I'm not going to talk about it. This is an ik type of word, but forget about it. Not important now. Um, this uh, auxiliary verb, when it is used as an auxiliary verb, because it can be used in a different way too, but when it is used as an auxiliary verb, uh, it has uh, only a past tense conjugation. Okay, so when we talk about its conjugation, it is only past tense. We do not use um, present tense forms. So those people, those uh, students of Hungarian who are familiar with uh, past tense conjugations, uh, they may recognize this T uh, part, <coughs> this T, uh, T's in, uh, in the suffixes. These T's um, express the uh, past tense. The second remark here is that we will be discussing only the uh, indefinite conjugation. Uh, again, those people who are advanced students or intermediate students, they may be familiar with the fact that in Hungarian we have actually two conjugation types for, for the verbs. Uh, one is uh, an indefinite conjugation and the other is definite, which means the two separate sets of suffixes are used for different purposes. This may make uh, a bit um, uh, complicated, uh, I mean this um, conjugations, but again, don't worry about this, forget it. We, I will be talking about one set of uh, suffixes and one um, situation or one 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 purpose uh, for using it. I recommend that you learn this. Unfortunately, it is a must. <laughs> you have to uh, if you want to speak fluently and if you want to speak properly. But this is not a very difficult thing. So you need a little practice, and you will. I'm sure you will know this. So basically, this is the indefinite conjugation for the verb. Sokik in uh, in a sense when we use it as an auxiliary verb. And um, in, let me read it for you. In soktam te soktál ő maga ön sokot mi soktunk ti soktatok ők maguk önök soktak. Maga and ön, you may re um, notice this, and maguk and önök. Uh, they are here because these expressions, these these pronouns are used when formally, uh, when you address people formally. Uh, other languages use uh, second person plural forms when formal uh, formal addressing of people uh, is expressed. We in Hungarian we use. Uh, third person forms together with maga or ön or plural maguk and önök when we want to address people formally. So this is why I put here um, uh, next to ő because ő means he and she, maga ön it means you but in a formal context. Okay in an informal context we use te or ti in a plural. 
Okay, so basically these are this is the conjugation for the verb sokik. And uh, what I will do now simply show you a few example when we use this structure again sokik. I mean the appropriate form of uh, sokik uh, in this conjugation table and the verb with the knee ending. And that's it. And this expresses that an action is habitually performed by somebody. Okay, let's see the examples. Example number one is uh, this guy who says that the following sentence Két alkalommal szoktam inni egy évben. B is missing from here. So I put it here. It, it won't look very nice. This, this is supposed to be a B, okay? So, két alkalommal szoktam inni egy évben, and you should notice that here we have szoktam inni. Szoktam is here from the table, conjugation table, and inni is to drink. So, the sentence means that két alkalommal on two occasions, alkalom is occasion, Két alkalommal, two, okay, on two occasions. Szoktam inni, I drink, and this is my habit, my habitual, I habitually drink, two occasions, egy évben, a year, in a year. In Hungarian, évben, it means in a year. So, basically means that I, I drink twice a year. That's it. Okay, and this is my habit. And uh, let's see how it goes on. Amikor a születésnapon van, when it is my birthday, születésnap, birthday, születésnapom, my birthday, so van is is, so amikor a születésnapon van, when it's my birthday, és amikor nincs, and when it's not my birthday. Okay, nincs, I discussed this word in a previous video, so basically, I drink twice a year when it's my birthday and when it's not. Okay, these are the two occasions when this person drinks. Okay, this is number one, first person singular. Soktam, here it is. Let's see the other example. Soktan et zeni. Here we have soktan. Okay. Te, informal, you. Uh, here we can observe knee ending, okay? Edzeni means to train. So, is it your habit that you train? Do you habitually train? Do you train? In, in English you don't have to, uh, to complicate it so, so much. Uh, do you train? And that's enough. In Hungarian we need to use some some other words too because we don't have continuous tense and simple uh, simple present tense in english we have continuous and simple tenses uh, so that makes quite uh, clear if an action is performed continuously at the very same moment when somebody is speaking or habitually in general but in hungarian we don't have this distinction we only have one tense one present tense and if you want to make a distinction, then, for example, this is one way to express that something is performed habitually. Okay, so soktal et zeni, do you habitually train? And this person uh, answers without words, just looking at the other guy and no words are needed. Enough said. Okay, this was the second person singular form. Let's go on. Now we have third person singular, sokot. Érdekes. Interesting. Ez az autó nem itt szokott parkolni. Ez az autó nem itt szokott parkolni. Now we can see sokot and parkolni. Okay. So the ending is here. Parkolni to park. To park a car. Sokot. Here you can see this. Uh, I don't think this is this needs to be translated uh, in a very strict way. Or simply, this do, uh, this this car doesn't park here usually, or doesn't. It is not a habit uh, for this car to park here, or something like that. As is auto, 
this car and nem it, not here, nem again, like discussed in the previous video, nem is like a minus sign, and therefore it emphasizes that not here, so this is not the place where this car normally parks. Okay, so this is the explanation of this uh, meme or this this sentence. Let's go to the plural forms, and uh, now we have an example for this soktunk. Soktunk. Nem soktunk ebédelni. Nem soktunk ebédelni. You realize soktunk ebédelni. Ni ending again. And ebédelni means to have lunch. Uh, we only have one very simple verb for this. And uh, nem soktunk ebédelni. We don't have lunch. It is not our habit to have lunch. And the second sentence is that mi eszünk egész nap. Mi eszünk egész nap. We eat the whole day. Egész nap, the whole day. We eat all day. So that's why we don't we don't have lunch. We eat all day. Okay, so this is the message of this meme. Okay, we have two more. Uh, soktatok. Okay, soktatok. It is uh, second person, plural, and an informal addressing. So, szoktatok imádkozni ebéd előtt? Szoktatok imádkozni ebéd előtt? Again, here we have szoktatok and imádkozni. Here is the ni ending. And imádkozni means to pray. So, do you pray before lunch? Is it your habit to have, to, to pray before lunch? Ebéd előtt. This ebéd Ebéd lunch and előtt is before. It may be weird that uh, these kinds of words are uh, used after the noun and not before the noun. So ebéd előtt and not előtt ebéd, like in many other languages. So in Hungarian, these kinds of words um, are after, placed after the noun, ebéd előtt. Okay, so do you pray before, before lunch? And uh, the answer, Nem a mamám tud főzni. No, my mummy can cook. Tud főzni. Can cook or is able to cook. Okay. Uh, one important uh, note about using this word mamám. Uh, in Hungarian, when a child says this, uh, normally he or she talks about grandmother and not the mother. So mama, mommy, they are usually, or in most of the cases, uh, about uh, the grandmother, grandma, okay, and not mother. At some places they use um, mama for uh, talking about mother, but this is not, 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 uh, not very often. Usually uh, it is about grandmother, okay. This may be interesting for you to know. And finally, we have uh, the third person plural form, soktak. Here we can observe soktak csinálni. Tíz szokás, amit a boldog emberek szoktak csinálni. Tíz szokás, amit a boldog emberek szoktak csinálni. Soktak csinálni. So they and csinál is to do or is to make. It, it is sometimes very confusing for Hungarians um, which one to use in English uh, to do or to make because of course we have some other words too but uh, uh, generally this this word csinálni uh, can be used in both senses. So csinálni in this case it means to do and uh, to look, to translate the whole sentence, we can say that these sokás ten habits, omit a boldog emberek, that the happy people normally do, usually do, habitually do. Okay, so ten uh, ten habits that uh, happy people do simply. Okay, soktak chinani again um, frequently or habitually do. Enough said, I think. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. I think 
this is not very difficult um, I recommend again that you learn this conjugation table you rec uh, you learn these um, six suffixes for uh, the stem sock and uh, if you use these um, uh, this sockic uh, word in this context with um, a verb uh, with a knee ending you will be able to express that a habit that that an action is performed habitually this sound this will sound very hungarian okay thank you so much again and uh, see you some other time Thank you.